Hello my friends, how are you today? I'm Andreas from Auto Fanatics and welcome to a new video. In this video we resume the work on the rear axle and on the rear underbody of the Subaru. We need a laptop for all the Torx specs. Torx specs? Torx specs. While assembling the rear axle as far as we can, because there are still two problems to solve. The first problem is that I'm, that I was dense again, because although from this point of view it doesn't look like that, this is still part of the bushing that I burned out. This shim has to make room for the new bushing that has arrived which looks like that. Yeah. And the th second thing still is I only have one correct wheel bearing and I need two. And the company that sold me one correct and one incorrect didn't answer my mails yet. But hey, at least we can do one side. I'd suggest we start the laptop. So what I'm now doing is comparing what I have to comparing what I must do to the parts catalog of Amayama, amayama.com if you don't know, and to the workshop manual, the service manual, if I ever need talk specs or similar. Oh, switch the side. There it is back. Where have I been there? Amayama. Bolt Traverse Link 080. So let's see, do we have a 080 here? Nope, 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 nope. Do we have 080 over here? Nope, nope, nope. Nope, not at all. What a pity. One hour later. But here we've got something. I was looking for the bolt and the nut to connect the rear control arm to the subframe. So we start over here, which gives us the self-locking nut 006, which is this one. Then gives us the washer for lateral ring with 030, is this monstrosity. And the next part will be this one, which gives us the bolt cam rear, 111. We have the direction of install and just have to install it. Once again, with more feeling, turns out I mixed up the shims, the spacers. Now that I've got the right ones, everything should line up. a little persuasion should line up and the camber bolt should go through as it does. So now I need to decide my camber and I want negative camber so everything goes that way. And I give it, need to give it a bump to make everything fit together because the original, the original nut for camber adjustment has a cutout in which it still needs to fit. There we go. Sorry guys, I don't want to hit you. And on that, 
the rear one needs another spacer with zero zero zero. It's a flat one. The crown spacer I've shown you is only for the front one. And it goes in flawlessly. Wonderful. So. A few moments later. Let's ask the magic computer. Oh. Goddamn HP. Yes. Great. No, go away. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay. We are over here. Then we need over there that shim. We ride, we go through there, go there. Z zero, zero, Quatsch, one, one, zero. Do we have one, one, zero? One, one, zero. One, one, one. One, one, one. Nope. Nope, that's something different. That's for the front. Nope. Nope. <sighs> that, that is a rare occurrence that the Subaru dealer orders you a wrong part. Sometimes I just give him the numbers and uh, yeah, and that case obviously it would be my bad but sometimes I have a sit down with him and tell him I need that and that bolt and these ones were that kind of occasion yes so obviously we can't put in the front arms <laughs> which uh, sucks a little bit oh boy as necessity is the mother of all inventions, we gotta have a change of plan and I start working on the diff cover. The gasket itself is well thought out. There's a writing on it that, which says up. So you should be able to read it when you install, when you install it. <laughs> you can't read it that way and it doesn't even fit. So the only chance is to fit it like that. Subaru built this for me. Et voilà. Another day, another solution. It's the solution to my wheel bearing problem. We had a few emails, talked about what I needed, what I got and what was missing. So they offered me to send me a different part, which is now express on its way to me. So I can finish the other side of the rear axle and go on with assembly. Don't be afraid, it makes a lot of crackling and cracking noises. That's what happens under pressure. But as you can see, it fits. And now to the other seal and to the ring. And with the snap ring it's like with an engagement ring or a wedding ring it's far easier to put it on whoa he said then to get it back or out 
or off without everything exploding and flying around you. These are obviously not the right prongs for the job, but I don't have bigger ones, so these must do. And they did. Later on the knuckle comes in there and this gasket will sit right here. So I probably just can put it there anyway. Let's talk about what happened after my Camry battery died yesterday. <laughs> because it's a lot. First of all, I have to admit I got a little bit angry because I messed the order of operations. I messed up, up the order of operations. Of course, I should have pressed in the wheel bearing before putting on the backing plate. So I took off the backing plate, pressed in the wheel bearing, then tried to press in the hub into the knuckle, which worked, but I now have play in the wheel bearing, which is not good because you only should have play in a worn out wheel bearing. But I've got high hopes that after putting on the axle nut and pushing everything together, the play will be gone. Either that or the wheel bearing is just crap. In addition to that, I had to come up with an idea how to press in the new bushings into the T-bar for the differential. And while doing that, I had to come up with an idea how to not get all the grease I put on, all the wax, the fluid film, the corrosion protection, while handling putting in the new bushings and also, which was way more difficult because of that, getting out the rest of the old bushings. And that really was a tough fight. You can see that didn't go easy and it took a lot of time. And of course I did hit my thumb. Of course. Of course the strikes with the hammer caused uh, a lot of stuff to drop down on the floor. And of course my mood wasn't really getting better because uh, of how hard to handle this piece of metal was. So next step now is to clean the workshop a little bit up, clean the floor a little bit up, get the welder out of the way, get the parts sorted, get the parts sorted which I will be sending myself and which go into the bin, and then start cleaning up everything here. The good thing is I now have a wire wheel. The bad thing is, uh, yeah, I'm in a t-shirt, short sleeve. That uh, will be a little bit problematic, but hey. Nobody said it's gonna be easy. I don't know how to begin this sentence. So there was putting bolts where bolts are supposed to be, wanting to assemble the brake as far as I can. I noticed I was missing the rubber seal for the lower brake adjustment for the parking brake. So I just thought, well, the old ones look good. I'm gonna take the ones from the old one. Wouldn't it be a scary coincidence if the old parts wouldn't be the same and I just wouldn't have noticed all the time. They aren't the same. I'm gonna take you over to the other one which is yet not mated with the knuckle. No, not at all. Now you might say, oh it's just the cover that's missing, it's maybe two piece. No, 
these are not the same. They are pressed, riveted, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> these are clearly, clearly different. So these probably are from a spec C, probably. Or are now a replacement part for all STI, blob eye, buck eye, and uh, hawk eye. As long as you have the ventilated discs in the back, which I have. Happily enough, the spacing for the caliper is the same. The caliper fits and without measuring it looks like the offset for the caliper will be fitting too. Yeah. <laughs> That was a mild shock for a moment. Since nothing is more continuous than changes, I changed my plan. I've used different bolts I had which fit properly, secured in with self-locking nuts. So everything here is fine and dandy. So of course I had two nuts to spare, which helped me mount this brace, which is now tight. I put the T-bar, the diff T-bar, supporting frame down on the table too. Then noticed I need a bunch load of uh, brackets. I didn't have cleaned, sanded, painted yet. So I did. These already are clean and have three coats of rust converter, rust sealer. These only have one. The knuckle and the hub of the right side have all the paint layers and all the conservation layers and we'll just need to harden and dry and like I said ages ago I will put a little bit of grease inside here so that the bolt never may stick again so I so did I yeah I will do this and then we'll see I just had the table a little bit clearer, a little bit more empty. I put on the diff brace. It's not bolted on. It's just lower brackets are back mounted. So this can't slip apart because of the head of the drive shaft assembly, the pinion. The missing brackets are still drying from painting. I've got the control arms now finally torqued down and everything. I've got at least one side on which I have the axle nut. I've got the diff back in, diff bolts. Everything is neat and tidy. You can see the shiny diff looking underneath. I've roughly adjusted the camera. Roughly, very, very roughly. All the adjustable arms are on the lowest spec, on the closest, on the smallest side. So completely inwards on both sides. That's because now I know both parts have uh, equal length, zero. And I can just uh, can adjust it from there, open it up and really dial it in. If I had one side sticking out that far and the other side that small, I might come into problems and have to loosen everything up again so it's better to do it that way at least to my mind in my opinion and here we have ABS sensors new brake cable and the brake cable bridge or is it no these are two ABS sensors there it is that's a huge package and I ordered this because I thought it might be really necessary, but later on noticed this thing on the Subaru sits inside. So it wasn't really that necessary. These ones weren't that necessary as well, but hey, why not? I made anything else uh, on the drum brake system new, so I can do that as well. After I assembled everything I could assemble on the rear axle, I switched to the work I dreaded the most, 
And that was cleaning the underbody. As you can see, Rusty and Dusty would be would be underestimating how much flew in my face. I almost never wear a face shield when just grinding away some dust with the wire wheel or rust with the wire wheel. But in that case, this was one of the rare occasions and exceptions. I really needed that thing. Trust me, really needed that thing. I've good news and bad news. <laughs> Let's have a look. Good news first. The rust on the chassis rails, on the frame rails, isn't that substantial. At least the stuff you can see. Yes, there's rust. Yes, it's even a little bit more than surface rust. I'd say it's more like stage two rust. But the insides of the frame rails are solid. The problems start round about here. I've removed the drain plugs and when you put your finger inside, which you obviously can't, so I will do for you, everything is clean and smooth. There's no coarse stuff to feel, so no rust. The frame is double layered, so there's an inside and an outside layer and both layers are fine. Over here again, you can finger the inner layer. I can go in the outer layer. Here it starts, you can hear it if I shut up. But that feels more like sand. And here the party starts. You even see it crumbling. And you can see the oxidation. I almost get to the boat. Oh, I get. Oh, I get over here. Here's my. Can see my finger sticking out, poking out. Show yourself. Ah, there it is. That's where the nut is missing. <laughs> and here's our beloved rust hole, which goes directly in the cabin underneath the rear passenger side right. Cut out the brake hole stuff. Oh yeah, that's uh, that has been the holder for the bracket of the brake hoses. For God's sake, glad I ordered a new one. Yeah, again rust and pit pitting, rust and pitting. My angle grinder doesn't reach uh, into that corner, so I gotta use a different tool for that. Didn't do the middle section yet, but it's again rust and pitting. Rust in between the metal layers. Oh, there's even a little bit of movement, but that might be original. Over here it looks a little bit better, still rusty, just a little bit better. And same goes for the frame rail over here. Remove the plugs, everything nice and nice and smooth. Getting going over here, still nice and smooth. Lower layer, S smooth, but if I finger all the way inside, to the front, you can hear it. There it starts. And over here, uh, here again, I wouldn't call it Rust Armageddon, but yeah, Rust. Let's just call it Rust. And we don't talk about that. Oh, while I've shown you that, another thing I found out, we've got here separated panels. This is uh, the inner wheel well. This is obviously the inside right to the frame. But I did not expect it to be so pliable. It doesn't even look that, um, that welded on. Don't know how to describe it. I didn't expect it to move that much. But that may be because on the downside here, everything's missing. Ah, there will be a few days where we'll be doing just that. Angle grinder and getting rid of rust. Yay! So this is how it looks now after a few hours of working on it with the grinder or the belt sander, the small handheld portable belt sander. But uh, there will be still be a few hours more work in it and then we go the chemical way with rust conversion. 
Well, my friends, in the end, it was a lot of rust, dust, and there's still a lot of work left. We made a huge impact on the rust on the underbody. Not even speaking about the now rust-free rear axle, but the underbody, unfortunately, will still leave a lot of work for me for the upcoming weekend and probably for the next week before I can start welding. I'm not even talking about priming or conservation, rust conservation, rust prevention. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any future videos, consider subscribing. And if you have subscribed, and even if you don't, I hope we see each other next week. Bye bye.